Hey everyone, Bob here, KD4BMG. Today's video kicks off a mini series on how to build a linked dipole for 10, 20, and 40 meter ham radio bands. There will be enough information in the video that you could go source your own components and build this antenna. I'm using the Coffee and Ham Radio's Mercury Antenna Kit. The guys over at CAR are putting together some awesome quality kits for us to build antennas these days. You can't go wrong. I don't know how they're making any money. If they are, it's good gear. When I first got into amateur radio, I was amazed that I could take a radio, attach a battery to it, attach an antenna that I purchased, key up and communicate locally and anywhere around the world with zero infrastructure. I am still intrigued by that. Well then one day I built my own antenna and that gave me a whole new sense of satisfaction and independence. So when catastrophe strikes, I want to have enough skill set that I could go and build an antenna from the scraps in the backyard after a hurricane blows through or a tornado or some other weather event, which is common here in the state of Florida. So why build an antenna? Why not? Expand your skills, hone up, get better, be prepared. And here's the kit, carefully gathered and packaged together by Chuck, KK6USY. The kit comes with instructions. Chuck has spent a great deal of time out in the field, meticulously determining the exact dimensions that you would cut your antenna to, as well as giving you some options to vary it slightly depending on where you want to be resonant in the band. I'm going to be following Chuck's instructions precisely, and then we're going to show how this thing tunes up out in the field in another video. As we close down the introductory video, let me explain for some of the newer hams who may not understand the concept of a linked dipole. So what you see here in front of you on the screen is an inverted V. We're not doing a dipole that is completely straight or horizontal. We're doing an inverted V because this allows it to be portable. And on the two extreme ends of the dipole, we can stake the ground and put a rope on the end of the wire. And we would attach it to the end of the leg of the dipole. And what you see on the left side of the pole, this gray item here represents your mast or a pole, or you could also hang this from a tree if you wanted to. What's on the left side of that pole and on the right side of that pole is the exact same thing. So it's a mirror image of each other. The red squiggly line, of course, is your feed line going up to the top of your mast. And this is where our car uh, winder and feed point will be. And on the right-hand side, you see 10, 20, and 40. So these are the three legs of the dipole. The 10-meter leg will be a certain length. When you add this 10-meter leg length to this second length, then you'll have the 20-meter length. The red circle here represents the link, or the place where you would create a break in the antenna. So if you create a break here, and here you have a 10 meter antenna. If you link here and here, but break here and here, you have a 20 meter antenna. If you link here and here, here and here, you have a 40 meter antenna. So that's what these lines represent here, the length of what the 20 meter would look like and the length of what the 40 meter would look like. You leave them attached with a carabiner the entire time, but when you want them linked, you actually attach the wires. So that's what we're building. I wanted to explain that. Now let me just show you real quick a picture, a photo of what a link looks like, and then we'll move on to the next video. When I built the car Artemis antenna, I made it a linked NFED. And I chose to do that in case I wanted to operate 20 meters in conditions that were more confined in space. So this car Artemis will do 20 meters in this configuration. And then when I add on the extension, I open up additional bands. My purpose is just to show how I created the link. So I take both ends of the two different wires and I connect them with this carabiner. And this is what we're going to be doing for our linked dipole. We'll always keep the various lengths of wire connected and that's how we will stretch them out from the center mast down to a ground stake. But they're not connected electrically. So until I connect them electrically, I have an independent 
antenna, and I can have that antenna at 10 meters. When I connect the second length by connecting the banana plug, now I would have 20 meters. And then I would have this same configuration between the 20 meter leg and the 40 meter leg. And so you either connect or disconnect on both sides of the dipole legs to get your 10 meter antenna, 20 meter or 40 meter antenna. That's what we mean by linked dipole. Next video up, we'll wind that turboid.